Alright, let's check and make sure that the stream is working properly. And a quick look here. Yep, we're live. I see the little green light. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Anime Deco. I'm your host, Denise. Joining me today is my friend Yvonne. Hello! How's it going, Yvonne? Not bad, you? Not too bad, it's been a while. Yeah, it has. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Busy with everything and just never had the time to hang out. Yeah, I know. I'm glad. for. <laughs> thanks for the invitation, really. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, you, you've been in Asia for a little while, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, well, like, I wouldn't call it a year. It was uh, around eight months. Oh, okay. So, like, I left Canada um, last year around beginning of January. Mm -hmm. And then, so I flew back to Taiwan. And then stayed there for a couple months before going to Japan, where I did my exchange, um, and that lasted for four months ish. And I did some traveling in Japan, and then went back to Taiwan for like a little bit, and then I flew back here. So like eight months ish, I think. Nice. Yeah. So so you did one semester in Japan. Yes. And um, so I've been to Japan, but I've never been to Taiwan. Yeah. So how's, like, how's, what's Taiwan like? So Taiwan is this like tiny country. Um, but it's like very like culturally rich, mm -hmm. especially the food. I would say like it's like internationally renowned for its uh, I don't know like delicacies and like food. Right. Um, because um, partly because uh, it's very kind of like a mixture of Japanese cuisine, Chinese cuisine, and like some American cuisine. Just like influences from like all over the world, and obviously like its own traditional cuisine. So. I don't know, like to me it's like what home feel or tastes like. Nice. But nice. I guess like to um, um, people from outside Taiwan they would kinda like see it as like, oh like this one tastes like a bit Japanese, like you know, yeah. maybe like I don't know, takoyaki or like okonomiyaki kind of taste. Oh so you guys have that type of food? Like oh, fried yeah. and everything? for sure, for oh, sure. Nice. We have like a lot of like we actually have a lot of seafood, which sure. is probably like something that's more distinct from, you know, like traditional Chinese food or like Japanese food, besides sushi, obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah, because like it's like an island surrounded by water, so like lots and lots of seafood. Of seafood. Oh yeah, for sure. And then we awesome. have like seafood, like you know, stir fry seafood, like um, steamed seafood, and just yeah. seafood in general. It's just so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's not exactly identical to like a Hong Kong cuisine. It's pretty much its own thing. Um, I guess like it's kind of similar to Hong Kong cuisine. I find. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, cause I, one, I've never been to Hong Kong, uh, and like two, my Hong Kong cuisine knowledge is kind of limited to, you know, dim sum. Dim sum? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, like, do you guys have hargao? Because if you do, I have to go to <laughs> We do, no, yes, we do, we do. And like, we have so many dim sum places too, but like, really? I would call it like... Also, oh, dim sum is a thing in, in oh, Taiwan. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But, like, I wish it was like, a thing from... in Japan too, it's, it doesn't exist oh, in really? Japan. No yeah. way! No, in Nagoya, oh like, there was just, like, no, so no dim sum places, uh -oh. and people had never heard of dim sum. Okay, no, like, no, that's a problem. What's dim sum? Uh -uh. <laughs> they weren't even aware that it existed. Oh my god. Can you well, imagine? Guess, oh my god. Dim sum? Ugh, they really don't They don't, they're not even aware not of it, they don't really know. People who travel no to China, people who travel yeah. to Hong Kong, they're like, oh yeah, you're talking about dim sum. Yeah, 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 we've had dim sum before, but if, they, if they've never been to China or, or uh, Hong Kong, they don't even, they've never even heard of it. No way! Yeah. Yeah. I guess they just have too much sushi. <laughs> yeah, they have too much sushi. But also, did you notice, this is um, uh, kind of not so related to Taiwan, but yeah. did you notice in Japan yeah. that the Chinese food really sucks? Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. I was so disappointed. I thought it would be like Chinese food, very... but better because no. it's Japanese, right? And they're perfectionists, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Wrong! It's crap! It's like the worst Chinese yep. food I've ever had. Don't have Chinese food in Japan. Yeah, don't even bother. No. It's really awful. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. And it's like, it just, it's all fake and weird. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's like fried rice but like really lame fried rice. Yeah. It's like, not as flavorful. Yeah. I, I would describe it as if you never made Chinese food in your mm -hmm. life and someone just gave you all the ingredients and was like, go, you have ten minutes. <laughs> Good luck. That's what it tastes like. It tastes oh, like a teenager yeah. like kinda of whipped it up yeah. but it was not allowed to use any kind of references mm -hmm. of any kind. No. It's so bad. <laughs> I was really, I was really shocked though. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I guess like, cause like you would expect J Japan to be like, yeah. you know, very, very good at its culinary culture, yeah. even like exactly. from all over the world. That's what but I would like, have expected, you know? I don't know. <laughs> but no, not, not the Chinese food. No. That was, uh, that was a bit of a letdown. Mm. So, um, so Taiwan is, is in my, in my mind, Taiwan's like a really kind of high tech, like kind of, um, you know, modern kind of a place. 
Is it all, is it like that kind of everywhere? Is that just Taipei or um, what's that look like? Taipei, like the big cities, yes. I see. Uh, okay. Yeah, like Taipei, Kaohsiung, and um, sometimes, well, I guess I okay, can include Taichung and like Tainan, where like, you know, a lot of, uh, it's like the kind of like the commercial hubs yeah. where like, you know, business people go and stuff like that. So like, we have a lot of, um, we have really good transportation systems. Um, awesome. Uh, we have the high speed train that's like kind of like the Shinkansen. Nice. So yeah, like that's one thing that like we kind of got from Japan. Um, and, yeah, just kind of borrow the technology and like it's like especially because like Taiwan is such a small country, so like yeah. getting from like the south end to like the north end takes yeah, like yeah. two hours on the train on that high speed train. So That's like cool. it's totally cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Nice. So it's actually like a really modern kind of country. Yeah. Now, does it also have? Um, uh, like I guess I have that image of ta Taiwan because of 101 Taipei. Like I didn't, I didn't know anything about Taiwan. Yeah. And then they started building the second tallest building in the yeah. world. Well, at the time it was the tallest. Yeah. Now I think it's the Burj, uh, the Burj Khalifa, and then yeah. it's 101 Taipei. Yeah. Right? I think so there's something else in between. Maybe. Yeah. Everything. Everyone's building like tall towers now. Yeah, I know. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 101 Taipei is before yeah. it was cool, right? Yeah. Just for the record. So, um, but it's really interesting the shape of it. No, it's it like is. This, it almost it looks is. like this kind of. Uh, I don't know if you want to know, right? You go to yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the um, that that like temple thingy. Yeah, that, that's what, like what do you call it? Multi-story <laughs> yeah, temple. Yeah, exactly. It was apparently that was the tallest temple in the world at the time. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. When they huh. built that, it was like one of the tallest buildings okay. ever made. Okay, I And it was like that. multiple stories. Yeah. It's, it's only three, four stories high. Yeah. It's five stories, but, <laughs> but it reminded me of, um, of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's a very like Asian-looking. Yeah. Um, Architecture. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you don't see that in Europe or anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, usually skyscrapers straight up the yeah. sides, um, nothing fancy, mm -hmm. but that was like a pretty neat looking yeah. kind of building. So. I don't know. I remember feeling like kind of like disappointed, kind of, when they first built it. Well, like, like I didn't know anything at the time, I mean, obviously, but like just look at the shape. I'm like, it's kind of ugly. But like now, I'm like, I totally <laughs> love that building because it's, really? you know, it's so <laughs> tall and like it's like a okay. symbol for Taipei. Yeah. And like, I have actually been to, well, not been, been like, you know, around the area, but like I've seen the fireworks they show around the building and on the building oh, um, wow. during like New Year's and stuff like that. Oh, that's fun. It's totally cool. It's like, nice. you know, the whole building, like, sh shoots out in flames. It's, that's so cool. It's super cool. So, like, I'm like a totally fan of the building right now. Okay, but, yeah. fantastic. Yep. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, but do they also have, like, ancient temples and yes. castles and stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, cool. Castles. Castles. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call them castles, but like we do have like a lot of um, traditional buildings from like olden times. Oh, good. And like good. temples like everywhere because like Buddhism is a big, big culture there. Yeah, yeah. Um, except like, you know, we don't like, you know, uh, explicitly express ourselves to be like Buddhists. But like we go to the temples like, you know, on uh, you know, uh, Chinese New Year and like yeah. traditional uh, dates like that. Yeah. And yeah. Well, like I remember going there, like as a kid, like any every single day and kind of thing. It's just like you oh, know, in cool. the neighborhood and just yeah. stroll in, say hi to the gods. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. It's it's a really chill kind of yeah. spirituality. Mm -hmm. That was like fifty percent of the traveling I did in Japan. Oh yeah. At least was just visiting temples. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really man. awesome. You can just hang out with your friend, mm -hmm. go walking, and oh, then yeah. just like do your thing For and sure. check out a temple and mm -hmm. then just go and have lunch. You know, it's really yeah. nice. It's it's really cool. I, I just find like a that. lot of the architectures of those such like yeah. religious kind of religious like mm -hmm. traditional um uh, architectures are like so beautiful. The gorgeous. In Japan, yeah. in China, and Taiwan, like those buildings are just Absolutely. gorgeous. It's, it's, it's something about the proportions yeah. and the angles and everything. Exactly. It looks so elegant mm -hmm. and it really transports you back in time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. So um, okay, so cool. So ta Taiwan does have that side too. Yes. Yes. That's great. It's very like I love like how they have preserved like the traditions like for so long and stuff. Yeah. It's just like I'm really glad. It's such a culturally rich place. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so, um and then so so you were in Taiwan I guess for the summer, right? For the summer vacation? Yes, for a couple weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you, you went to uh, Kansai, you said, right? Yes. That's my favorite part of Japan. Maybe, I right? love that place. <laughs> I love that area so in awesome. general, like Osaka, yeah. Nara, Nara, not really. Osaka, Kyoto, um, Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, it's like my favorite region. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Osaka is really cool city. All the food in Osaka. It's so oh good. God. It's the best. Yeah, it the is. best food in Japan mm-hmm. is from Kansai. Oh yeah. I mean for that. Sure, that's sure. pretty much yeah. how, how it is. Mm-hmm. Their seafood is really good. Their seafood is really good. It's so fresh. Oh yeah. And um, they're really into fried food. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing there. Yeah, in, in Osaka. Yeah. Yeah, they love their okonomiyaki. Yeah, and the takoyaki, all the yakis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so great. And yet the sushi is actually really good too because oh, it's right yeah. next to the sea. Sure. So, it's so good. Yeah. And it's like not super expensive, like you know, Tokyo. Yeah, no, no, like, no. Oh. Super overpriced, but like. Yeah. Kansai yeah, is so true. good. Kansai is wonderful. If you've never been to Japan before, this is what I want to tell everybody, and they ask me like, where should I go? Like, what, what should, where should I stay? I was telling them like, first of all. Don't enter the country from Tokyo. No. Because then you compare no. everything to Tokyo, and everything is not Tokyo. You gotta understand, Japan's a diverse place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, try to try to get a flight to Kansai Kuko, yeah. and uh, then discover it from Osaka, and then onwards. Yeah. Because that it just it's such an old school feeling place. Like you're walking around Osaka, you feel oh, yeah. like you're in the 70s. For sure. The place has not changed. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's to have all these old buildings and like it's still high tech and everything. Oh, yeah, they have like, sure. trains, train stations every mm-hmm. five minutes practically, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they're like orange. It, it's like you're watching the world through an Instagram filter. <laughs> is what I the agree. whole experience. Yeah, like. it's no, such no, a no, retro sure. kind of place. Oh yeah, it is. I oh yeah, Osaka. retro is the word for sure. <laughs> it's so retro. I love Osaka. Yeah, it's the best. And like not to mention like Kyoto is just like a train ride away. Oh yeah, that's so, and Kobe so like jealous. it's in the middle. Of I was too, like, so like, jealous. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so great there. And like, Kyoto obviously for like traditional buildings and yeah. everything, jinjas, temples. Oh yeah. And like it's food. Oh my God, Kyoto's food. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it is a food city. Oh yeah, it? for sure. They love to eat. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, there's a whole lot of other like not necessarily traditional Japanese culture, yeah. but. Um, other stuff that's really, really big in oh, Kyoto, yeah, for sure. like jazz. Yeah. And I discovered this in the most random way. Like oh, yeah? the entire time in Japan, was relying heavily on stuff like uh, Yelp and um, you know Gudenabi and stuff like that to like find popular restaurants and you know stuff that was like highly ranked and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but in Kyoto, this one day we were around. Um, what's that area with the covered market called again? I can't remember. Oh, it's Kiji. Wait, no, that's not. That's the Tokyo one. Mm. Um, Kawaramachi. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Kawaramachi, that's it. Exactly. So we were hanging around Kawaramachi. Yeah. Um, uh, me and one of my friends. Yeah. And um, we we're just kind of biking around after having visited a couple of temples. Mm-hmm. And so we said, "Hey, man, let's uh, let's go have lunch." Uh, but we didn't we didn't have any plans. So we yeah. just wandered around. And then there, I passed this place and I heard jazz music, and I was like. Hey, I think there's a jazz bar around here somewhere. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Yeah. And there was this building, this like brick building. Yeah. There was no sign. Okay. And there was some windows, and there was like some action happening in the basement. Right. So I was like, I think it's coming from there. Let's check this place out. There was no sign or anything. We walk in, and it's like a cafe. Uh huh. And they have like a live jazz band. No way. In the basement. That's so cool. Yeah, and the building was like hella old, and it was oh all it was really hipster. Yeah. Like it was a really retro kind of place. There was no foreigners there. Oh, yeah. I was like, yes, I found the place. Oh my gosh. There's no foreigners. And they were so wow. surprised. They're like, how do these two guys just know about our like hidden jazz? Yeah. Den or whatever. Yeah. It was a jazz den. Oh my god! Yeah, and they were just That's chilling, amazing. like hanging out and doing jazz music. And I was like, this is so crazy. And there was no old people. Mm-hmm. It was all young people listening to jazz music. Yeah. That's the kind of place that Kyoto is, oh and it changed everything for me after that. I was oh like, yeah. Wow, this place is a lot of hidden gems. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, Kansai is awesome. Kansai is beautiful. So what which university did you study at? So I went to um, this uh, private university called Kansai Gakuin University. Okay, which Kansai is, like, Gakuin. Kind of different from Kansai University, which is like the public one. Yeah. But yeah, it's a uh, it's kind of in between um, Osaka and Kobe in oh, a city nice. called Nishinomiya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like a small town kind of thing, but like you know, um, we have a couple like it's kind of. Famous. Like you would know the university if you were from Kansai region, but like if you were mm. from Tokyo, you probably like never heard of the university. Mm. But it's a beautiful campus, like beautiful, nice. beautiful, nice. and like um, it's a very international campus too. Um, it's a Christian school, so it's oh, got like a lot of like international students. It's got its own like English taught program, like faculty oh. with like a lot of courses in like you know different like sociology, history, political science, yeah. math sometimes. Yeah, so it's like a really diverse. Um, school that like nobody really ever heard of it. So mm-hmm. like I feel kind of sad, but like no, it's okay. Like I love that school. 
And like I've met Very so nice. many, so many friends there. Oh, that's all great. over the place, not just Japanese, yeah. like all yeah. over the place. That's Beautiful. one of the things I really enjoyed too about studying abroad is that you meet a lot of. I met a lot of um, Americans, of course. Yeah. They're everywhere. Oh yeah. Uh, Aussies. Yeah. Because they're not far. Mm -hmm. And uh, Europeans too. Yeah. So it was just a lot of fun, and then and then um, a, a lot of Chinese students too. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which is interesting because of the complicated past that Japan true. and China have. Yeah, but really now true. all the Chinese students are coming to study in Japan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, and studying Japanese, which is interesting. It is. Um, I guess they must do a lot of trade with Japan, but basically. Probably, yeah. So, so it's useful for them to learn mm -hmm. Japanese. For sure, for sure. I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of. I've heard like a lot of um, Japanese universities been like sending a lot, a lot of students going abroad to like China, to China. and like you know, you know Beijing, Shanghai, those like big cities mm -hmm. and stuff. It makes sense that like they're yeah. exchanging students like that. And I guess so. Yeah. It's pretty good. I mean, improving mm. relations. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, so okay, you were at you were at Kansai Gakuin then. Yes. Because see, what I had done is that I had originally applied to Kansai Gaidai. Okay. And and because it's a really big university. Yeah. Right? A lot of international students, and it was perfectly situated yeah. halfway between Osaka and Nara almost. Oh, yeah. And. Um, and so I figured uh, I've got a pretty good shot. Right. I had four point oh GPA. Like there's yeah. no way. And yet, um, my sensei actually blocked my application. What's why? Because he he sat me down. He's like, listen, and he's. Um, you're like the second best student in my class. I'm not gonna send you to a party school, okay? You're going, <laughs> you're going to University of Nagoya Foreign Studies because it's the hardest school I could find. And I was like, come on, man, don't do this really? to me. Oh I want to have a life when I go to Japan. Right. He's like, yeah. Oh my god, so you ended yeah. up going to, uh, to Nagoya, Nagoya University? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it was wow. hard. It was like it was the hardest, hardest oh, no. language courses I've ever taken in my life. Oh my god. It was brutal. They do like 100 kanji a day. Oh my god. Yeah, it was intense. <laughs> yes, 100 kanji. Did five hundred How did me. you live? It was brutal. It was oh, totally no. brutal. So oh. um, yeah, that wasn't an intermediate. Met in the advanced oh class. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I cannot. It was a brutality, but uh, luckily I had good preparation because okay. one of my uh, senpais had had yeah. the same problem. Oh yeah. And uh, he said, "Look, I'm gonna walk you through this. It's not that hard. Um, you just have to constantly be like." consuming Japanese language. Mm -hmm. You have to be listening to the radio, mm -hmm. leave the TV on when you're yeah. cooking, when you're not doing anything in your apartment. It's like, eventually your brain is just gonna do all the work in right. the background, right. and it, every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. So that's what I started doing. Okay. And um, and I survived somehow. Like uh, I didn't have amazing grades, but right. I, I passed all my classes, right. and I did fine. Okay. So, uh, but I learned really a lot. So I didn't, re I didn't regret it, but, um, yeah. so, the reason why is because all the spots were taken for from first years right. to go to Kansai Gaidai. Right. And so we had this one uh, student who, who ended up taking my place. And I was just so angry at him. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're making me work oh, so hard. No. This is happening because of you, Alex. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but anyway, he ended up having, like, an incredible misadventure. Oh yeah. And then ended up writing about it in like the you know the yearbook that they have. Right, yeah. I don't know if you have one at McGill, but at the International House that in Muslim Bahia they have like mm -hmm. a yearbook, mm -hmm. and you can actually just when you when you come back from your travel, you can write down like your journal entry yeah. of how it was there. Right. And it was a horror show for him apparently. Oh no! Oh <laughs> yeah, my yeah. gosh! It was really bad. Wow. <laughs> he ended up getting um, so he. he he was really independent and he decided, well, you know what, I'm not going to live in dorms, I'm not going to do homestay, I'm going to find my own apartment like a grown-up. Like, okay, okay. Good, good luck with that, Gaijin. Okay. So he ends up getting shacked up with some like divorced 50-year-old woman oh, who used to work nights and was a heavy smoker. Okay. So all of his clothing ended up spending with his oh, no. like smoking. He smoke a lot in Japan, right? Uh -oh, yeah. So and the apartments are not non-smoking. Oh. You can smoke if you want. So yeah. so he, he was just miserable and he was just really unhappy. Uh oh. So um <gasps> so yeah. Oh my gosh, I guess like you kind of escaped that. <laughs> yeah, I dodged a bullet. But <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But uh, but I had a chance to visit my other friend who was sitting there. Yeah. And so um so yeah, so it was okay. in the Osaka area and everything. Right. So that's pretty good. It's so much fun. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you get to go back there one day. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure for will. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Also, like, if if you have you have you ever been to Kyushu? Not to Kyushu. Okay, no. Kyushu no, no, no. is like a must go. Really. It's beautiful there. Like I've been to Fukuoka. 
Uh -huh. um, I've been to, I didn't go in like, you know, a lot of places, but like yeah. Fukuoka, I've been to like, in the center of Kyushu, there's like this um, small kind of like mountain, mountain kind of town called Takachiho, and like okay. it has a gorge where you can paddle a boat through the freaking gorge. Oh, wow. It's so beautiful there. It's like, oh my god, it's like, gorgeous. That sounds really cool. Really, really beautiful there. Nice. And like, um, I went to Miyazaki. Oh, you went to Miyazaki? Yeah. I have a friend from Miyazaki. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it's a little wow. countryside village yeah. almost. Yeah, oh, right? yeah, for sure. But like, they have the best beaches. Really? Really. Oh, I didn't even know they had beaches. They though. have like, there's this um little city. Well, I wouldn't call it a city. I don't know. A town? Aoshima. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not a, uh, island, but it's called Aoshima. Right. Um, it's like in Miyazaki-ken, and then, um, that has, that's like the beautiful, like, most beautiful beach I've ever been to, and like, really? I don't know, I guess like, it's also like, timing, like, weather was perfect, and like, I was like, you know, having the time of my life. Nice. And I woke up, um, one morning to see the sunrise. Yeah. It was beautiful, it was gorgeous, it was breathtaking. That's awesome. It was Oh, amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yeah. like if you're if you're in southern Japan, mm -hmm. it's really worth it to For go sure. to, to Miyazaki. And it's like super yeah. cheap to go like around Kyushu too, because like they're promoting a lot of like tourism and stuff. Really? Especially after the Kumamoto earthquake. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. So actually Kyushu is um, a different climate, maybe, right? Kind than, of. Than Honshu? Like, yeah. It's, it's, it seems to be like... You said beach, so I guess tropically ish mm, or subtropical, maybe. Kind of. I, I like notice the uh, trees and the plants kind of grow differently. Um, I see a lot of like palm tree kind of, kind of palm tree um, so trees like, down there palm -ish as well. Ish. Yeah. Trees. Okay. And like I don't know coconut right. trees. I don't know what they are. But, oh, like, okay. So they it's totally looks, yeah. different. Like the landscape looks different too. Yeah. Ah. Um. But like yeah, in terms of because like I went in the summer, so like it was warm anyways. Um, so I I don't know if uh, the temperature is like that much of a difference, but I would hmm. definitely f say that like um, Kyushu is like a lot kind of closer to you know to like Taiwan in terms of um, food culture, uh, temperature, and like you know the surrounding area environment right. as opposed to like you know Honshu and like you know, Osaka or Tokyo and stuff like that. I was in Fukuoka and like they have this like they have um at night they set up uh, stalls like food stalls around oh, along the street. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, like the yatais. That's like, really oh. cool. I'm like, oh my god, I went into the city and I'm like, I feel like I'm in Taipei. That's like, really cool. nice. That's it's yeah. really, that's really very um, old fashioned. Oh yeah. It's, they it's they like really don't awesome. do that anymore in most no. uh, most parts of Japan. No, in fact, it's really sad. I'm trying to. I experienced that in Kobe. Okay. In, in Kobe, they have like. Well, actually, I just went to China. Right. Did they have stalls, or was it just like a lot of restaurants? No, I think they had stalls. Okay. They had stalls, yeah. and so in Chinatown and Kobe, they they have this, but I don't know that they have that in other major cities. Like in Nagoya, I can't remember there being. Mm. Uh, any food stalls, right. even in like the old market right. area. Um, so, and neither neither in Tokyo, in Osaka they had that in this one place, but for uh, the Sakura festival. Right. right. So they had oh, okay. like a that little festival ground, yeah. and so like you could walk through, and it was like a Matsuri-ish kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So during Matsuri's they do, yeah. but aside from that, like. Kyushu, you can just go any evening yeah. and go eat in a food stall and walk it's around. Beautiful. That's amazing. It is. It's almost like every day can could almost be like a festival yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. Wow, you are really doing a good job selling Kyushu <laughs> on me. Oh yeah, Kyushu's like amazing. All right. Like not a lot of people go there because it's, I don't know a lot of people just go to like Osaka, you know, Tokyo, mm -hmm. whatever. But like Kyushu's a must go. Mm. Yeah. For sure. Very interesting. They have good food. Very interesting. <laughs> there's actually a, uh, a major, um, there's this, so the science, uh, scientific product uh, development and like uh, chemical engineering related mm -hmm. uh, pro pro projects and okay. also certain uh, industries that are highly scientific and technical yeah. are quite big in Kyushu from what oh, I understand. Yeah? yeah, because I was doing research on one, on a port for an assignment. Right. Uh, for geography class, and one of the ports is it's practically dedicated to that. Like it's all like sensitive scientific okay. payloads and okay. things like that. So it's just really specific. It seems oh. like so it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure what city that 
it's either Kijakushu or something like that. Okay, okay, yeah. So, um, so it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting place. And mm -hmm. certainly, further south of Kyushu, you have the, uh, the, the rocket launch center, right? Yeah. So that's in the Tanigashima, yeah. which is, I guess, south of um, Moroto, I think? I think so. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, so that's really interesting. How long were you in Kyushu for? Um, a week, no, half a week ish, kind okay. of. So, like, I was hopping around the cities. I didn't really have time to stay for too long for it in one city. I really okay. wanted to, like, you know, go, like, actually yeah. around the island, go to like, Nagasaki, which is, like, another place I really wanted to go. But I ended up, like, not having enough time. So, like, I mean, you always have to, like, leave something for the next time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. Kyushu's awesome. Very cool. Mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna have to make a trip to Kyushu now. No, no, for sure, for sure. Please, please. <laughs> yeah? And have the ramen there. It's legit? Yep. All right. The Hakata ramen? Oh my god. Amazing. Oh, so that's what Hakata ramen is a reference to. It's a kind of ramen. <laughs> it's, it's a, like, Hakata is, um, the, uh, kind of like the downtown of Fukuoka. Ah. So, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, so that's why it's called Hakata ramen. Yep. I see. Yep. Cause see, we have a ramen place here in Montreal yep. called Hakata Ramen. Oh, that makes um, sense. And so I just, uh, <laughs> I'm wondering what the Hakata is referenced to, but. Yeah. Huh. I think that's cool. Wow. <laughs> so, what, what, what just, were you, were you studying Japanese there at the university or were you taking other courses too? Or? Oh, yeah. I'm like doing, I was uh, doing half of my course load in Japanese, like Japanese education. Mm. Um, and half of them I was taking a lot of uh, political science courses, which is like my major. Oh, you're making so, politics? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, and like I thought, you know, like since I'm abroad, I want to learn about politics and Japanese point of view. And, yeah. Yeah, it was so interesting. I was taking like, you know, Japanese foreign policy, Japanese domestic policy, oh, and like, you know, just like some uh, general stuff like international conflicts and stuff like that. Mm. It was really cool. And like, there were, um, because like the school I went to, it's a uh, very international. So they had uh, professors teach in like English, like actual like professors, um, like foreigner professors uh, they hired from like other places, yeah. and also like you know Japanese professors who have um, studied in the in the abroad and stuff like that. So like they have like you know proficient English enough to like teach people. So yeah, I was, I was, good. I was having a like, time of my life like learning things That's like cool. I wouldn't have like yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, sure. so it's so cool. Like it's always interesting to like learn about you know. A, a subject, any subject, in like different yeah. points of view. Yeah, absolutely. And like, oh yeah, yeah that's like the whole point of going on exchange. Yeah, right? international exchange is like, it really changes your life. Oh yeah, for it? sure, for sure. Yeah, it really does. Um, so in my case, I did something similar to you where yeah. I took half of my courses mm -hmm. um, there. And uh, But the only thing, the interesting thing is that Nagoya University uh, Foreign Studies has um, almost all their courses are in English only. Okay, so cool. So for the Japanese students, that aspect of it is um, a little bit challenging because right. they, they have to have a certain level of English coming in. Yeah. So, um, and then they have some other programs which do, uh, which are offered in Japanese right. for the Japanese students, but most of those are not um, programs that like foreigners would, would have been taking in their home country. Yeah. So usually, uh, you know, we, we get we end up in, the, in an English uh, language right. uh, class. And so i had taken uh, two international business okay. um, classes. So cool. so that's kind of uh, what I did there. Yeah. In the Japanese, of course. So. Oh. Mm. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so on to anime, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, were, were you watching anime there, too? Or, uh, I kind of was, hmm. but like the thing is like they don't really play a lot of animes on TV and stuff like that. So like, I yeah, I noticed kind of, that too. I didn't. Right? Th there's hardly any anime yeah. on right? mainstream Japanese I thought, TV. I thought that was kind of. I was odd. a little surprised. I mean, like, yeah, I was a little surprised that. Yeah. That. Or maybe do you think they're premium channels or something? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Like I've scrolled through like a couple okay. channels that are like you know dedicated just for animes, but like. Yeah. I wasn't seeing a lot of you know the new ones. The ones like in season. I was seeing a lot of like you know Conans and like yeah Naruto's old school and, like, stuff. Yeah, 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 true. yeah. True, true, true. It was really cool. Yeah. Kind of um, weird, but like. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, I didn't get uh, TV Tokyo, and okay. I know that there are quite a lot of anime that end up on TV Tokyo, for yeah. example. But I didn't get that station. Right. So, uh, so frankly, I didn't watch a single anime on TV. I was watching okay. like um, the news and some dramas. Yeah. Okay, you're into dramas, right? Kind of. <laughs> a little bit. Let me ask you something. Okay. 
the current generation of Japanese, uh, not voice actors, the voice actors are very good, okay. but they're actual live action actors. I feel like there's been a decline. I kind of feel the same. Yeah. Except like I can't really place a judgment because like I haven't watched a lot of um, dramas from like before. Right. To be able to compare it with like you know nowadays. Okay. But like I definitely find that like you know the dramas coming out nowadays like have lack something that like I yeah. can't really place my finger. Yeah, acting you know? talent for, yeah. for starters. I, I, yeah, that's like, you know, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I, because I, I feel very strongly about this because of okay. how much I love 1970s yeah. Japanese cinema, yeah. like Kurosawa classics mm -hmm. and stuff. We had actors like Toshiro Mifune, mm -hmm. and now try to find a single Japanese actor who's anywhere near as good as any of like the B-grade yeah. actors who were from the 70s. You'll be hard pressed to find oh, someone. Yeah. They're all like, it, it feels like they're overacting and they're like not really used to the whole acting mm -hmm. thing okay. and like it feels like they cannot deliver a natural uh, effortless sort of delivery. Okay. It's as though they're, they're they're really it's like you can tell that they're acting. Right. I don't know how to describe it but it's I, so weird. I think weird. I know what you're talking like what you mean. Yeah and which is so yeah. like infuriating because their the <laughs> voice actors are fantastic. Yeah, they are. Like it took now I find that finally after like maybe 20 years of anime dubbing, yeah. North American voice actors are getting good. Yeah. Right? But in the 90s and 2000s, you'd be hard pressed to find single English language anime that For was sure. even palpable. For sure. Right? But, but now they're getting quite good. But yeah. Japanese voice actors have been excellent oh, yeah. since as long as I can remember. Oh, yeah. Right? So, so it's just, it's such a, it's such a a clash, mm. and, and I'm just, I, I have no explanation for it, but that is, that is how it is, so, yeah. um, so, uh, you were, you were, uh, mentioning you wanted to talk about one of your favorite anime sequels, right? Nodame. Yes. Nodame Kantabie. Uh -huh. So, like, it is, uh, originally a manga, written by, um, Tomoko Ninomiya. Well, it's written by a girl. Yes, it's a female sensei. And uh -huh. then, so like, the anime, or the manga itself I haven't read, so I'm not sure if it was like a big hit at the time, but like it must have been, because like they made a anime out of it, a drama really? out of it, two yeah. movies out of it. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, that was like a smash hit, oh, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, because uh, for this kind of uh, manga, or like this kind of story, I find that like, you know, something with uh, action and like actual sound mm -hmm. would be better, because this, um, story is about kind of it's a center so that around um, classical music or like music in general hmm. so without sound you can't really you know get the full yeah. experience right experience like, like you have the, to you know search yeah. up what the song they're talking about <laughs> like, you know play in the youtube in the back of your mind as you read manga so <laughs> I, I would say mean. like yeah anime drama yeah. totally fine but okay, manga cool. i don't know i'm, I'm not sure mm -hmm. but it's definitely like a really cool cool story it's a cute kind of romantic comedy um, between uh, this uh, guy that's like a genius at this music school who like um, he's like really really talented in piano playing uh -huh. and then he like aspired to be a conductor of a symphony orchestra so like that was that was um, his whole like kind of story in, in this like story and then so the girl is a also like a very talented pia pianist but she kind of she's kind of everywhere she's kind of silly kind of like I don't know, she, just, she like likes to do her own thing. She doesn't really like to like you know go by the rules and stuff. So her challenge was to, you know, find kind of to like improve and like catch up with the guy who like she fell she falls in love with. Mm. You know, it's a romantic comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then so like she was kind of um she was kind of struggling to catch up with him and like, you know, be able to like go go around the world with him, which is like his dream, but like uh. he also has like this fear of going onto the airplanes. So which is like really interesting. It makes the whole series like really, really funny. So he wants to travel the world, yeah. but he's afraid of airplanes. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's really funny. <laughs> and the thing is like, I don't know, like I find that like um with this kind of story, like I wouldn't really I wouldn't really expect much from like, you know, a uh, anime or like manga that's like stand centering ar around, you know, music or sports. Right. Like something right. like that. Like something where like, you know, people would just, you know, the storyline is typically like someone who's like really bad at something and then they would mm. get better and better and better yeah. until like, you know, at the end they like 
really, really matures and like perfect something and like yeah. you know be super professional. Yeah, and they reach some like pro yeah. level. And thanks for watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like I wouldn't, I didn't, I wasn't expecting like anything like yeah. that or anything like you know from this story at all. But like uh, it turns out to be like a really fun ride. You know what I mean? Oh, nice. like, it's just like you like you kind of like grow with the characters and like nice. I, I don't know. It's just like it's it's like. It's a very, very intimate kind of experience. Mm. Like growing with the characters yeah. and like seeing how like they coped with like stuff. And the music itself is just beautiful. Like I'm a big fan of classical music. Yeah, me too. So yeah, like just like watching the anime and the drama was just like, oh my god, it was like an experience. And like it's yeah. it's got like the right level of comedy in it. Oh, so like you're so kind good. of like laughing along the way. Yeah, 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 and like yeah. kind of like crying when like, you know, they finally succeed in like performing some piece. And then you're just like, oh my god, like, oh my god, <laughs> like, it's so beautiful, like, oh my god. Because, like, they, you were there when, like, you were, you know, they were um, going through all the difficulties. Yeah, and yeah, you're just yeah. like, okay, are they going to succeed? Like, I hope they do. And, like, they finally do. And you're just like, oh, I'm a proud mom right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly that feeling. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you were there for the struggle. Yes. Right? So you can really appreciate it when finally things start going their yeah. way. Mm -hmm. You know? And I know that I know that feeling. Yeah. I know that feel. Um, <laughs> you know, it's really interesting because recently there was um, a uh, I'm just gonna double check mic is still I recently discovered that this mic has a thirty minute timeout. Oh no reason. way! Okay. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Huh. So like, I was on a live stream and I was just like, blah 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 blah. Ah, uh, I'm feeling my mic is off. And oh yeah, no! Yeah, it is. So, it like, went silent for an hour. Uh -oh. It was just nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's on right now. It is. It All is. Right, it's been the entire time. All right, thank perfect. Thank for that. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but if you support us on Patreon, maybe I can afford a new mic, everybody. So, <laughs> and an HD webcam, maybe yes. would be nice. Um, but I. Uh, yeah, so about classical music, uh, did you watch Your Lie in April? Yes! Isn't it so good? It's beautiful! Oh, it's just so, like, oh you, you watch it, and you're just, you're just there, you're like, mm. Oh my Magnifique. god! Magnifique! It's lovely! It it's is just, so oh, awesome! It's, it's a I mean, it's such an equi it's exquisite piece of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, it's something you can, like, gift to like your aunt or something oh yeah you know? you're like for please, sure. please watch this yes. just please enjoy it yes. and it's it's such a high quality yes. the music is just fantastic beautiful, beautiful composition beautiful. uh the artwork is is lovely beautiful. and and it's funny it's yeah, clever exactly it's just it's so relatable mm -hmm. um and it's made for young people but it's oh, really yeah. mature and yes. and um and watchable enough exactly. for an older crowd yeah so like i i love these type of anime series and, and I also recently watched um, it was about jazz okay and actually it was directed by uh, Shinichiro Watanabe okay so uh, the director of Cowboy Bebop wow yeah 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 and so and, and it's so if you know this director you know how rare it is that he makes an anime about a work that he hasn't written exactly very rare in yeah. fact I think it's the only one it's the exception yeah so it was a manga right. and he just read this manga and he's like this is such a good story how <laughs> is there no anime about that well the hell with it I'm gonna make it okay and it's just a work of oh art my gosh. it's so good it's, it is so good and, and what I really love about it is that it's actually set in a show period oh, okay so like huh. it's an anime with really high quality right late 2000s animation, right. but it's mad old school, huh. and there's no technology, well, I mean, you know, they're in the show period, so, like, they, like even the buses look old and kind of, you know, yeah. everything's period, huh. uh, so, uh, and it, and that's when jazz music was getting popular, right, right. in post-war Japan, right. and so, uh, so, like, it just, it, it turns out that a really, really good formula for a very engaging and high-quality anime show is make it about music, yeah. and then everything else will just be fine too, but the music <laughs> will be really, really good. Yeah, so, for sure. So I think this is, like, I'm going to chase this feeling and I'm going to be looking for more and more, like, music or mm -hmm. anime yeah. to watch because it, they're idea. just so lovely. They're beautiful. And, like, it's just, like, it's not like, you know, other animes where you're, like, kind of, like, tighten your seat and yeah, yeah. like, oh, yeah. action packs and everything and, like, mm -hmm. makes you think or whatever. And this one's just, like, you sit back and relax and enjoy the music. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, the story would be beautiful yeah. at the same time and just right. like, oh my god i'm like i'm so happy right yeah, now yeah 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 like, exactly. it's so beautiful would you would you agree that it's very similar to the sensation of being at a classical music concert i agree it's completely very much the same yes, vibe right exactly yeah i love that 
Mm-hmm. So, like, who who were the voice actors in Notre Dame? Were anybody famous? Or? So, the voice actors, I don't think so. It's a, it's a pretty old um, uh, anime, so, like, um, I don't know if you know them, but, um, so, are uh, the, um, what was it? The female um, main character, who is uh, Megumi Noda, which who is also called Noba, Nodame, which is a uh, you know the title of the the uh, manga. Um, she is voiced by Ayako Kawasumi. I don't know if you ever heard of her. Has she done anything else? Um, I'm not sure actually. I have to look into that. Hmm. But also, um, the male character Shinichi Chiaki is um, voiced by Tomo Tomokazu Seki. Huh. Which someone I've actually never heard of him, so I'm not sure. I'll have to look into okay. that too. That's but like, okay. You know, old animes like I, I, I'm actually like not very educated in them. That's okay. But <laughs> at the same time, though, like the drama, TV drama. Yeah. They are like the actors for them are like really good, like super good. The male actor, yeah. I haven't actually seen him in anywhere else, but like I'm sure she, he's huh. famous. I, I've heard of him. Um, Several times, just not, not. I can't like think of any other dramas that he's in. Okay. But um, the male or the female actor actress is a um, Judy Judy Ueno, who is like really, who is apparently really good in like a, other other like mystery movies and dramas. Oh. I also can't think of a specific name right now, but like I've seen her everywhere, uh -huh. and it's like crazy because like I'm like, huh, aren't you Nodame? And like Nodame is a <laughs> Very silly character, cool. and like you see her in like a other like you know suspenseful like yeah, 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 yeah. action dramas and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, do I know you? <laughs> I'm not sure, but like no, she's like she's an amazing. Oh, you have actress. a personal relationship with fictional no, yeah. characters. It's, I it's get that too. Awesome. <laughs> I'm just like, cause like Nodame is like such a unique character. Like you have nice. to watch it to be able to get it. She's like she's one of a kind. She's really one of a kind. Oh, awesome. Oh yeah, and she's like I love zany she's female so characters. Cute. She's like a cute, so cute character fun. and like. You know, nice. super silly, super clumsy, but like super cute and like you just like grow with her and just love her and nice. stuff like that. And like you know, like Judy Wendell like portrays her like so so well. Oh, like yeah? so well. Like oh. I don't know, I find like the T V dramas like usually when um it's like a doctor from uh anime, yeah. you wouldn't like expect too much from it. It's, like, yeah, just, no. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like in animes, they can like draw whatever they want, right? Yeah, they exactly. can make it as dramatic as they want. Definitely. But in TV dramas, when you do that, you're just like, huh, that looks fake. Like, I don't know. I don't know yeah. how I feel about this. And, and exactly. And often, uh, because anime usually deals with something really fictional yeah. and sometimes like fantastical, mm -hmm. so like if you try to take like. Naruto and make it live action, yeah. you're gonna have a lot of cheesy oh, CG yeah. effects. For sure, for sure. <laughs> a lot. Mm -hmm. So well, that's why I'm kind of nervous because of the Full Metal Alchemist movie that's Oh my out. god, you seen the trailer? I'm yeah. just kind of like... I'm really nervous right now. Like, like I, I don't they're know. gonna ruin my they childhood. They could, they could. Like, Full Metal Alchemist, yeah. you cannot, you can do that. You that can do was, that, to it. that was the series that got me into Oh anime. really? No way. Yes, absolutely. Um, so here's the weird thing. Okay. Uh, in high school, I was never into anime. Okay. Like I just, I wasn't into it. Like right. I, Cause it was the Pokemon boom. Oh, and okay. for me, right. like, okay, I was, it's true, I, I was a Nintendo kid, but yeah. I was really into like my Zelda and, right. um, yeah, just pretty much Zelda. Right. Okay. <laughs> Zelda, Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. GoldenEye, like all those like boys games kind yeah. of thing, right? Except for maybe Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, you know, that's right. like, everybody plays those, but, um, and, and then I see like all these kids running around with Pokemon lunchboxes and right. Pokemon running shoes and, uh, you know, Pokemon that's on their Game Boy, and I'm just right. like, what is Pokemon? Right. Like, oh, it's this really awesome RPG, you have to play it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll try, I'll right. play it. I was like, this is like every other RPG <laughs> ever made, and it just has a different skin. Yeah. Don't you people understand? <laughs> and they're I like, agree. no, but it's, you have to cast them all. I'm like, that's the point. They're abusing you. <laughs> and then the people don't get that, right? They're just no. like, no, but it's awesome. You get, it's so repetitive. But they just don't understand. Mm -hmm. But and, but Zelda's not like that, because right. in action RPG, every single Zelda is totally different, right. you know? So at that time I was so exasperated, and then, and then the anime came out. I was like, "Oh great! Now there's something called anime, and it was made for Pokemon." Yeah. <laughs> so that's 
<laughs> I thought Adam was. Yeah. I thought it was like this media tie-in mm -hmm. for video games. Right. And I just completely ignored it. I was right. like, this is this is just I cannot be bothered with this anime yeah. you speak of. And yeah. I ignored anime until I was eighteen. Okay. And then my cousins came over one day and we used to hang out every weekend and play video games right. at my place. And um, they said, dude, you have to watch Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. I was like, Full Metal Alchemist? Full Metal Alchemist? Where have I heard that before? Full Metal... It sounds like that movie, the war movie about Vietnam. <laughs> what is it called? The full, full Metal Jacket? Is this about Vietnam? They're like, dude, it's not about Vietnam. It's just shut up and watch this anime. <laughs> like, it's an anime. I don't watch anime. <laughs> like, no, no, you're gonna like this. Just, right. just, just watch this. It's, yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not about magic or anything, is it? Because I'm... <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's good. It's good. And then after that, I was like, whoa, this... Hooked. What is this? <laughs> what is this wizardry? Yeah. I need more. Mm -hmm. So, um... Nothing made does that to you. It really does that For actually. sure. For sure. But now I'm really nervous because it's... Yeah, how are they gonna translate all those weird effects no that they do? Idea. And, like, the transmutation circles yeah, exactly. and um, even the intro like they, they showed like all, all like I guess it was the rock trans transformation yeah. or whatever um, the transmutation like it, it looked okay but I'm really nervous for yeah. when like what's gonna happen when yeah. um, Roy Mustang comes on the right. scene is the fire gonna look good or is it gonna yeah. look fake I don't know I'm really nervous yeah I don't know what to expect Me neither. <laughs> but, I don't know I just kind, kind of can't go get over the um, Long hair that Ed is gonna be wearing. Yeah. Like I mean, like yeah. it looks beautiful in the anime and everything. Like I yeah. love Ed's blonde hair, but like yeah, in real great. life action, just like. Yeah. It no, might be a bit too much. Right, so if you're Japanese and you're watching and you're considering dyeing your hair blonde, please don't. Tell me, write to me in the comments below, tell me what I have to do to convince you that blonde hair is a bad no. idea. Blonde, blonde kami no kei wa dame nan desu yo, dame nan desu yo. Onegaishi, onegaishi suru desu yo. Blonde, blonde ni kawanai de kudasai ne. So, uh, but yeah, a lot of them, like some, some of them I guess, do right like it's yeah. a subculture kind of thing yeah yeah and like sure. they'll look very 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 foreign yeah again what do you call that like the girls that do that it's called like gado or something like that something like that yeah, yeah. so it's like this weird like um phenomenon where yeah. um japanese women of a certain age usually they're like late teens early 20s yeah yeah and uh they'll have like super processed hair. Mm -hmm. It'll either be blonde or it'll be like really curly mm -hmm. and like caramel colored or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and they will just be caked with makeup yeah. and look like aliens. <laughs> so, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, it's so it's so like bizarre. Like yeah, you, you don't exactly. know how to you don't know how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And it's just really it's really funny. But it is uh like a subculture there, I guess. Like I I would say that you know some people can definitely pull it off. But I don't know. Yeah, really? You, you've like, seen it pulled off? I've yet to see it pulled off. Well, okay. I've, I've only seen it as a train wreck. Oh, really? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, of course. Okay, to be honest, maybe maybe it was just that, you know, you know, cosplay and like you know anime conventions that I find like, oh yeah, that's that looks really cool. Let me tell maybe you that makes sense. It turns out yeah. it turns out that most of the cosplayers that have all the crazy, like awesome looking hair, they're wigs. Yeah! It's rare that it's act their actual hair. That, like, makes sense. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, like, they look really, really well, but, like, Yeah, they look really cool, and, like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, like, yeah, it just... Yeah, like, I just don't... Just don't do it. It just doesn't... Don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad that we feel the same way about yes. this. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. But, uh, but FMA, another series with a beautiful classical music soundtrack. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, I actually... It was the first anime soundtrack I downloaded, and it, it like they went to some great lengths to produce the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, it was sure. it was done by like the Moscow Symphony Orchestra okay. and directed by Ushan, um, Ushima Michiru, I think. Okay. And um, hadn't heard of him either. Classical music composer from Japan, right. really really talented. Actually, our the uh, OSM composer was uh, Japanese. Right? No way. Of course, Nagano Ken. Oh. Yeah, Kentaro Nagano, and he recently, only recently passed away. So, um, yeah, a famous Montrealer, originally from Japan, was the uh, the, the conductor of uh, wow. her own uh, uh, symphony orchestra. That's amazing. So, That's good yeah, yeah. Wow. So, um, so you're recommending this one? You're giving this one like a two thumbs up, huh? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. She's giving me her, my homework now. <laughs> How many episodes is it though? So, for the TV one, they have eleven episodes. Uh, like one hour each, I think. Okay. So it's like 11 hours in total. Plus the two movies that's like kind of like a sequel. Oh. Um, 
For the anime though, huh, I'll have to, it, it seems a lot longer. Oh, okay, there we go. 23 episodes. Oh, 23 is good. That's mm -hmm. what, that's a good length. So it was, yeah. they did it for two seasons. Yeah. Season. Some, one some, season. One season. Yeah. One season. Oh, one season. there might be, yeah, there's a second season that's 11 episodes. Oh, cool. So like, kind of like, you know, three seasons worth of episodes. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. doable. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's like totally beautiful and like, you'll enjoy it so much. And like you'll probably be laughing along the way and just kind of nice. like laughing at Nodabe. <laughs> She's so cute. She's adorable. That that's a good sign. As you may have noticed, I like my cute stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She's really adorable. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Okay. How good is Yoko Kondo though as an anime music composer? Like, I just, I'm in love with her work. Yeah. I, everything she's made is, like, genius level I agree. music. It's a, on a whole other level I agree. of fantastic. Mm -hmm. How amazing would it be to actually attend a Yoko Kondo? Oh my god, like please! I would, I would actually just die of <laughs> <a> collapse. <laughs> oh my god. It would be incredible. Wait, does, does she um, hold, like, concerts? I don't like know. No. I don't know. I, I I want I want to like I want that to be true. Yeah. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna look it up and okay. then I will get back to you. Oh yeah, no, no, for because sure. Because if that's a thing, yeah, I definitely right? want to do that in right? my lifetime. Oh yeah. Because I feel like we're gonna look back on composers like mm -hmm. that and be like, you know what? The '90s and the 2000s, it turns out, was a golden age for anime, mm -hmm. and people like Yoko Kano, we just don't have musical composer like that mm -hmm. anymore, and she's like stupendously uh, talented, oh, yeah. really, really good. Um, and you know what? The interesting thing is, I got into classical music uh -huh. because of anime, oh, really? and specifically because of Yoko Kano. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like the soundtrack of um, the music at the beginning of uh, Ghost in the Shell, for example. And ah, although that's not pure classical, but right. like it, it, it's um, it, it it's it has a lot of opera right. in it. Yeah. And um, and then uh, a number of other soundtracks too. Right? I mean, she's done all kinds of work. Oh yeah. But um, and then she's so diverse too. Like then she'll go and do the soundtrack to like. Um, Cowboy Bebop, mm -hmm. which is like Bebop jazz. Yeah, she's really good at that too. Mm -hmm. so what can this? What can this I woman know, not do? Right? I don't understand. Like, yeah. do you have a genre? Or you're just like a genius at everything. <laughs> yeah. I feel like every single it's piece crazy. she does, she's done. Yeah. It, it just kind of like touches your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just yeah. like feel it every single. You really feel it. It's so, so yeah. engaging. It's, it's amazing. Oh, she's so talented. Very, very talented. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, anime soundtracks could be like. Something in and of itself that you can you can like maybe you don't even enjoy watching uh, Japanese cartoons, but um, if you yeah. like good music, oh, yeah. their soundtracks are like better oh, than yeah. a lot of actual bands oh, and yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Right? It's, I mean, it's really, really good. Really, just like look at like Studio Ghibli, yeah. all the music in the Studio music Ghibli, Ghibli films. Ghibli is... Beautiful. Joe Hisaishi yeah. does like the most like. Beautiful job yeah. of like composing music for like background, yes. you know, anime stuff, yes. and movies, anything. Yeah, especially beautiful. in in Spirited Away. The oh music my god, so beautiful. So good. Did I tell you that like I actually went to Joey Saichi's concert when I was in Japan? <gasps> you did? Yeah, I did. Whoa. It was like How was I that? went like all the way to Okayama mm -hmm. because the Osaka one was sold out. Like oh. in like five seconds, all the tickets were like sold out. Like the yeah, website figures. crashed. I couldn't even get it. <laughs> and yeah, so I had to go to Okayama to see his concert. It was the most amazing like wow. experience ever. He had to like come in like you know like when or uh, when the uh comp uh, or what was it conductor like hmm. you know they bow and they leave. Right. And then like when people are clapping, they would like you know come back and bow again. Yeah. He had to do like three times, <laughs> four times even. I don't remember. We were just like all standing and clapping like super loudly. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was it was beautiful. I like tears in my eyes because like yeah. I was so like touched. It's like, it's so dramatic. It right? was and like just like all the childhood dream. I'm actually like <laughs> listening to it live. Like That's imagine so good. that. Yeah. It's oh my so gosh! Amazing. It really, it's, it's amazing how music can transport you oh, yeah. to another time and like, sure. bring back all these memories of mm -hmm. your childhood. Oh, it, yeah. it can be such a powerful force. Oh yeah, for sure. It's, oh my gosh. It's just really incredible. Yeah. Um, wow, that's, so, that's such a privilege. Yeah, I know. Lucky you! I'm really, I'm really happy I went. That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, did you have any questions for me? So, hmm. Not sure. 
Have you ever been like, have you been like watching, because like you said you're gonna start, you know, looking into like, you know, other you know, music related animes and stuff. Yeah. But like so far, you've watched like a couple, right? Well, when I say music related, not, um, not so many about musicians specifically, right. but uh, so for those just just two, I, I think kids on the slope, right, um, and uh, also your line April. Right. So only two of them, and both of them, I, I only watched them this year. Yeah. Although kids on the slope was actually released in 2012. Okay. Um, but since then, um, I just like I just discovered it, and now I'm ready to absorb it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My well, body is ready. you know that like no that may come to me is gonna be first on your list. Yes, it just is. Saying. <laughs> it is. There's there is no list right now. That is the list. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, perfect. So actually, I have a list. I have an anime list. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, on my iPhone. I actually have that too. <laughs> I use the reminders for that. Yeah, it's so helpful. Yeah, exactly. I, I couldn't. I would never remember to watch anything if oh, it wasn't yeah, for, for sure. this. Sure. So, uh, let's see here. Are you serious right now? All I have on it is Gundam? Um, that's interesting. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I get, yeah, pretty much typical guy. Alright, so Nodame is going on this list officially. So, awesome. So what else have you seen that's music related? Let's see, Your Lion Pro is one of the most recent ones. Yeah. Before that was Nodame, I think. Yeah. And then I remember seeing something else. I can't remember. I remember like a lot of you know good soundtracks from other animes that mm. aren't necessarily like, you know, yeah related. Have you watched Cowboy Bebop? Yeah. How, how awesome was that? It's beautiful. I it's still so listen like, to New Job is on it's a like daily so basis. It's so like fun to it's listen so to. It's so fun. You know? It's so it's fun. Like, and gives like, you, like energy. Yeah, seriously. Did yeah. you know that Google uh, has added um, like a, a custom music station on Google Play Music uh -huh. called For New Javas Fans. And no it's, way! Yeah, it's all artists like New Javas. It's wow. all like chill hop, and half of them are Japanese. Oh, okay! Yeah, it's all chill hop, and it's cool. so good. It is so good. That's so cool! Yeah, and I only discovered it because I have a bunch of New Java, like all right. of New Java's work on my on my Google Play Music, yeah. uh, and because it's in the cloud, what it does is it analyzes your music and then recommends you radio stations that right. they oh, have kind perfect. of uh, curated. Yeah. So huh. yeah. So wow. Yeah, so if you've never tried Google Play Music, give it a shot. <laughs> it's actually really awesome. So yeah. yeah, that one was so cool because yeah. all the music for it was all original. Yeah. And it and it has like this very unique aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Like the look, the feel and the music of Cowboy Bebop. There's nothing like Cowboy yeah. Bebop. There, I agree. There's nothing like it. No, and for me like if you're serious about your entertainment and you value quality over quantity, you you have to focus as much as possible on series like that. Yeah. And I'm saying that as a Gundam fan, and, and <laughs> Gundam is almost like the complete opposite of it, although I still consider it to be a quality work, yeah. uh, because the writing is good, because the acting is good, right. there's a very deep and engaging story. Yeah. Um, it's just that it's the exception among the high budget commercial uh, animes. A lot of them are like, um, like I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, but uh, actually I'm not a huge fan of Attack on Titan. Okay. Not a huge fan. Like, okay. I, it's it's a really cool series, but yeah. you you watch it and you realize that like it's mostly just the action that's really cool. Right. The characters are nice and cute and funny and stuff, and um, the concept is unique yeah. and really really neat. Yeah. I like that. It's, I guess it's really hard to impress me, isn't it? Because um, <laughs> <laughs> because there was like two three plot holes and I was like. Huh, there's, there's plot holes in this anime. What, what, what kind of anime is this? <laughs> so I just I, I just got really put off. Yeah. And, and then so there's plot holes, and then also like the, the 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 pacing and the tension is really really high in the beginning. Yeah. And then like after a while, they're just like, guys, I agree. is anybody gonna fight at any point? Like, is I anything agree, gonna happen? Yeah. So you're you're just like, waiting there for something to happen. It's because they they've like run out of steam, right. or they have to like go through this like time of non. Intensity to get back to some other intensity, yeah. and like the whole the whole show changes during that phase, yeah. right? Um, another thing is that um, so Cowboy Bebop didn't have any of those like filler episodes, right? And it didn't have any like um, what, what what do you call it like charging up episodes? Yeah, right. You know yeah. the episodes were like exactly. there's a fight that's about to happen, yeah, exactly. but well, let's talk to each other for like 20, 23 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then leave you with blue balls at the That's end. That's what makes it great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like without those, yeah. it's what makes it great. Cowboy Bebop is just like, yo, what's up? 
let's take a walk through the Heian period. Yeah. Follow me. And you're just <laughs> chilling, walking through the Heian period yeah. with your best friend. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. It's just like a nice walk through time. Yep. And But let's take our music with us because yeah. I kind of like hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> It's such a simple concept, and it's just so good. Yeah. You know, and, and then li little tropes like at the on in the first scene where they're showing like a scene of like uh, Tokyo or New York or something. Mm -hmm. No, of Tokyo. Right. And and then they just like so it's like this kid walking around like beatbox or something yeah. like that, and it's it's hip hop music and it's all these big buildings, and then they like rewind the tape back like three hundred years. Yeah. That's such a cool thing to I do. I know, right? It's so cool. I've never seen anything like that. It's genius. It is. It's it so is. Genius. Very classic. Yeah, and um, in, 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 in the same, in much the same vein, um, Samurai Champloo has that same vibe. Oh! It's, it's totally, sorry, Cowboy Bebop has the, right. has the same, has the same uh, vibe. Right. So, so Samurai Champloo has that in terms of the hip-hop, but Cowboy Bebop, they, they, they go in like a bebop jazz direction. Yeah. So, so like, it's not about music, mm -hmm. but the music of the anime is so good that even like to this day, uh, I was on the IGN Anime Club Facebook page and people are like quoting the line from the <laughs> from the intro song. No way! You know, like you, you, you awesome. know the intro song, right? Yeah. Like let's get everybody and stuff together. <laughs> Three, two, one, let's jam. And people still say that to this day. Oh my god! And, like, it's amazing. I asked people like my brother's friend was over at our house one day and I was like, dude, do you watch anime? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's 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 cool. Have you ever watched um, Cowboy Bebop? He's like, let's get everyone in this stuff together. Oh god, man. This guy. Like, it's, it's just incredible how you can instantly become friends with someone yeah. because they've watched oh the same god, anime. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, in that sense, I feel like uh, Watanabe's work is always, the music has to be yeah. totally unique to his own mm -hmm. thing. And so in that sense, I feel like those two uh, are in their own little dimension. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I just, I, I think this is really interesting, like the anime that's centered around music. I, I know there's a lot of it out there. And, Probably, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of chase this feeling. Yeah. So, oh yeah, um, for sure, for sure. Yeah. They're gonna be so good, though. Like, just like, just imagine, like, you know, like anything with, like, good music good is music. good, you know? Good music, yeah, yeah. And in fact, Japanese musicians are really good. Yeah, right? Yeah, they're very, I very talented. I find that, too. I, I, uh, I discovered a bebop jazz uh, musician, okay. um, and her name is escaping me right now, but um, the album was called Bebop at the Savoy, and it was right. by um, this Japanese woman who's like a bass player, I think, okay. and just really, really funky vibe. Yeah. Uh, the execution is just fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, do you think it's because they have a lot of music, uh, like social clubs in high school? That they grew up playing music. Probably, yeah. Because like they encourage, yeah. they encourage you know people to be involved in like clubs. Yeah. And like a lot of people would like you know end up joining like, music clubs and yeah. stuff and you know create their own bands kind of thing. And that's like totally cool. Like not yeah. not like you know socially frowned about or anything. You know. You know it's interesting that almost. At least half the bands, pop bands in Japan, mm -hmm. became bands because they met at their university, oh, yeah. like K on Music Club yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, and so that's really like it's almost like a it's almost like a path that yeah. that they that they take. Yeah. And um, and so it's really it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, I feel like hip hop is like still really big in. I think so. Like I feel like the vibe, the music vibe of visiting Japan, contemporary Japan, it, it's a little bit like visiting um, North America in the early 2000s, in the late 90s. Yeah. Hip hop is still big. Yeah. And it sounds old school. It doesn't sound new school. There's no like auto tune that I can no. remember. There's none of that. And. Um, there's like a lot of like alternative rock music. Right, yeah. They're there really is. into alternative yeah. rock music. And so it sounds like it sounds like old music, which is why I like it. It's totally so, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Totally classic. Um, yeah, so um Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um yeah, um, if you guys have any questions, um, definitely ask us in the comments, mm -hmm. and uh, you can also post it on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash anime deco, and um, as of last night, I managed to create a, a Patreon page. So, oh, nice. yeah, Patreon is really easy to use, by the way. Huh. For all you YouTubers out there, if you want um, to, to get started on Patreon, it took like an hour. And it's really? just like, you click through it, and you just go next, 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 
and it's all easy to use. I and thought it was complicated. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I figured it would take forever, and it just took an hour. So Perfect. It was wonderful. Um, and on that note, if you guys can support us, that would be fantastic. I know a lot of you guys use Adblock, um, and uh, you're probably feeling guilty and maybe a little bit nervous that the uh, spirits of anime past will haunt you because you're <laughs> robbing our ad revenue. But I'll, I'll forgive you, and I'll, I'll even talk to the spirits. I'll, I'll uh, have a word with them. You'll get a pass. Uh, yeah, just even a dollar a month can go a long way. We're actually hoping to do a lot of anime giveaways pretty soon. So um, I have uh, a good friend who has an anime store, and we've been talking about the cool giveaways that we could do in terms of gifts. And um, so yeah, so as soon as we can get some sort of uh, funding rolling in, we'll be able to have some nice contests and giveaways. Um, and so that's that's about it, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay frosty. Stay frosty. <laughs> you're like you're natural at this. <laughs> really, honestly, this is a lot of fun. <laughs>